All right, welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to go over the various settings for slow motion, specifically under the frame interpolation category, and show you what they do and the results that they give. And if you happen to need any free royalty-free music for your videos that's absolutely safe to use, or some free DaVinci Resolve templates and effects, follow the link below to my company Tunesquid and grab that all for free. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so I've got a video clip in here. It's just of some boxing. I chose this because it has some pretty quick movements in here and it's going to give us the most problematic visual artifacts. So let's get into this. If you, let's say, had a clip that was high frame rates, all you would have to do is go into the change clip speed section, drop it down to whatever you want. So if you were using B-roll, this is a pretty good method, but that's not what we're after in this video. What we're after is slowing it down and retaining motion clarity as best as we can. So DaVinci Resolve allows for a couple of different options. So basically what we're going to be doing is going into the inspector, click on retime, and we're going to be using these various settings, which is again for frame interpolation and creating frames that didn't exist before. So to slow down our actual clip, just right click on it, go into retime control, and then click on this drop down arrow and we can change it to 50% speed for now. And on the default settings, it's usually going to default to the nearest setting, which is just going to duplicate frames until you get to the next one. So if I just scooch forward here, you can see here's a frame, here's the exact same frame, and then it moves on to the next one. But if we were to slow this down even further to, let's say, one quarter speed, what we're going to get is one, two, three, four, before it switches over to the next one, two, three, four. And if we play this back, it's going to be really choppy. And that's because it's inserted four frames where there was usually one. So this isn't the best method going forward. So the next option is the frame blend method, which basically takes the first and second frame and creates new ones by trying to blend the two together. So if we zoom in a little bit here, what we're going to see is around her boxing glove, you're going to see a lot of ghosting. And that's basically the method that this is going to be doing. It looks at the current frame. It looks at the one that's the next real one and just tries to blend whatever's in between. So you're going to get a lot of this ghosting. So if we play this back, it's a lot better. But as soon as we get into some of the bigger movement like this, you see a lot of that ghosting and it works. It might be the effect you're looking for, but it's not the clearest and most crisp image that we could use. So the next method is going to be the optical flow. And when we click this one, we're going to get a little bit more options with the motion estimation. So if we go with the least intensive one, you're going to be able to play this back pretty much real time. Even if you have a pretty low spec computer, it usually works. What this method is going to do, it's basically going to try to create frames. It's still going to create them based on the first and second one. Uh, using a little bit of that frame blend, but we're going to see a lot less of the ghosting, especially as we move up the motion estimation. You're going to see better and better results. So at this most basic one, once we go forward, we can see there's very little, if any, ghosting. You can see a little bit of blurred edges if we zoom in here. But a lot of that ghosting, for the most part, is gone. The only time we really get it is if we go into really big motions. And here you can start to see around the window frame and around her glove and her elbow, there's some ghosting still happening because it's taking its best guess. You're getting a little bit of warping, but it's still a much better result than before. So if I play this back,
you can see there's artifacts. It's not the clearest image, but it's still a lot less choppy than it was before. If we go back to here, and now we select the next preset, which is standard better. Again, you're probably gonna play this back in real time, and it's just going to be a little bit better than it was before. So better, still not perfect. Enhanced faster, you're probably going to start running into limitations here. You may not be able to play this back in real time, but you are going to get a better result. And finally, enhanced better. So this is the best that you're going to be able to get on the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And it is pretty good, all things considered. But if you're on the paid version, you do have one more preset, which is even better. This one is going to use DaVinci Resolve's AI to try to create frames that didn't exist before based on that first and second frame. And it gives by far the best result, but there's basically zero chance of you playing this back in real time. This is going to be something that you put on and you're going to have to render it out. But if I go forward and just play this one frame at a time, just moving forward on my keyboard, we can see there's basically no ghosting. It's pretty smooth. It's doing a really good job at estimating the motion. You still do get some artifacts. You get a little bit of that blur, but it's way better than any of the other results. This is as good as you're going to be able to get here. And what I'm going to do is just render out all of these options from here and play them back just so you can see what each one looks like going forward from here. And if this video was helpful at all, let me know in the comments below and let me know what you'd like to see in future episodes. And again, if you need any free royalty free music or some DaVinci Resolve templates and effects, grab them all for free at my company ToonSquid. And from here, I'll let you see the results of the various different slow motions that are available within DaVinci Resolve. Thank you.